Welcome traders to another Tickmail earnings season preview with me, Patrick Munley. Before we jump into today's report, as always, want to adhere to that risk disclaimer. Most pertinent to today's presentation is the fact that the views and opinions expressed by me are solely mine. They're not indicative or representative of those held by Tickmail UK or Tickmail Europe Limited. Okay, let's jump into today's report and we are checking in with Google parent Alphabet, who are set to report earnings after the close of trade in New York today. We're looking for an earnings per share estimate of 1.176 on revenue of 76.179 billion. The issue for Alphabet is, uh, is really around YouTube. Uh, it's likely to be a weak spot again uh, when they report earnings this evening. YouTube's slowing ad, re ad revenue growth is one issue for Google, uh, while the subscription side of its business remains opaque to investors. When Alphabet reported Google earnings for the September quarter, YouTube ad revenues shrank for the first time. YouTube ad revenues slipped 2% to $7.07 billion, missing estimates of $7.5 billion. Google re began reporting some YouTube financial metrics separately in the fourth quarter of 2019. For this December quarter, analyst estimates that YouTube revenues of 8.2 billion, that's down nearly 5%. Uh, YouTube revenue boomed during the coronavirus uh, pandemic. Uh, so the company faces tough year over year comparisons, uh, according to some Google stock analysts. But other factors also are at work. YouTube is being squeezed on one side by restrictions on consumer data in the wake of Apple's privacy changes, and on the other side by increased competition from streaming and short video platforms. Concerns on cash flow have grown following YouTube's recent announced $2 billion seven. Uh, $2 billion seven-year deal with the NFL uh, for the Sunday ticket, which will start in 2023. Let's take a look at some of the statistical trading patterns we can expect to see around Alphabet earnings. Google shares have moved higher in the immediate aftermath of earnings, eight out of 12 previous reports. On average, the stocks moved up 2.3% in the first day of announcing uh, earnings. Based on the previous 12 earnings releases, Google is more likely to trade lower one day after uh, announcing earnings for an average loss of 0%, so basically flat on the day. On average, though, the stock has moved higher 1% one week after earnings. Let's take a look at where we are from the analyst community. 51 analysts uh, surveyed in the last three months. They have issued a, a net strong buy on the stock. We have an upside target of 150 max uh, with an average of 123.22. Uh, on the low side there, $93 is, uh, is the lowest expectation over the next 12 months. From a flow and sentiment perspective, options traders are pricing in a 5.7% move on earnings and the stock has averaged a 5.4% move in recent quarters. The options market has overestimated Google stock earnings movement 50% of the time over the last 12 quarters of data. Has been notable buying 1,091 contracts of the $100 call expiring Friday. In general, though, options order flow sentiment has been bearish. Investor sentiment going into the company's earnings release has only 36% expecting an earnings beat. Let's pull up the uh, Google chart and see if we can identify any near-term trading opportunities. So from a technical perspective, versus that $84 swing low, we have a 103 corrective upside, bit of range resistance coming in there, 104.46. Obviously, we have that $100 call, which is in the money now as of, uh, as of close yesterday. So if the earnings come in line, uh, with estimates or we get any upside surprise, I'd be looking to be long through that 104.70, targeting the yearly pivot, which comes in 107.58. We also have the uh, descending weekly trend channel resistance coming in there, 107.40. So certainly I'd be protecting uh, any profits by that stage. At this stage, any uh, any downside downside outlook or downbeat outlook from Google, I'd be looking for pullbacks into the gap here at the $93 level. Watch for bullish reversal patterns there again to engage on the long side, looking for a move up into our target zone of that yearly pivot, 107.60s. Obviously, if we can break out of this weekly descending trend channel, then we would be looking at that 122 upside objective from the analyst community as the, uh, as the target for the move to the upside. At this stage, it would really take a close back through the $90 level, 
as a meaningful bearish development, opening a move to retest $84 on the downside. As always, traders, plan the trade, trade the plan, and most importantly, manage your risk. Until next time, thanks very much.